Hey, what's up guys? Michael Hammond here. If you struggle with chronic injuries, if you want a more efficient running stride, or you just want to improve your running times, this video is for you. We're going to talk about good form running and what you need to do to improve your form. There's really two ways to go about it when it comes down to it. There's one, which is just like consciously thinking about it, right? So there's actually thinking about like an ideal form, some type of form that you want to achieve, whether it's Elliot Kipchoge's form or whoever's form it is, whatever type of form it is, uh, better posture, better knee lift, things like that. Consciously thinking about that, that's number one. Number two is, you know, you're strengthening, your muscle memory, things like that. Those, those are kind of the two different aspects of, of running form. And that second one, the strengthening, that includes like drills, uh, uh, strength exercises, things like that. These both work together. And I think most people usually go about it, they'll choose one, they'll do one of those things. They'll think about it consciously or they'll do a bunch of drills, things like that. Whatever it is, you need to do both. Because if you only do number one, if you only do like the drills, if you only do, or I'm sorry, if you only do the, uh, the thinking about it, if that's all you do, then the problem is you're, you're just gonna revert right back. So you're gonna think about it, you're gonna be running, you're gonna be thinking about proper running form, whatever it is, and next thing you know, five minutes later, you're gonna think about something else, or you're gonna have a better song in your head, and you're gonna think about that, and your form is gonna go right back to where it was before. The problem with doing the second one, like just strength training, just drills, things like that, is that you might reinforce the wrong movements. You need that, that conscious thinking about your form in order to form that muscle memory, in order for those drills, the strengthening, all that stuff you're doing, in order for that to actually have an effect and have the right effect to reinforce the right habits that you want, then you need to do both. So you gotta think about it consciously, then you gotta do the strength work. We li I like to go to number one first, kind of the thinking about it consciously part because I like to get the right mindset, okay? So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do partially, like the first part of this video, we're gonna form the right mindset in terms of your form and thus when you're doing the, the strength work, the drills, uh, all that stuff, it's gonna reinforce the right movements. So look, here's the harsh reality. You're never gonna have perfect form. It's just never gonna happen, especially if you're fully grown. You've just reinforced too many bad habits. If you've sat in a chair for a long time, if you work at a, at a desk all day, if you drive a car a lot, you've driven a car probably a lot by the time you're even you know, 17, 18 years old. If you're fully grown, it's gonna be incredibly difficult to have perfect form. At the same time, we don't really want perfect form. We want the best form for you, okay? So that's kind of a second point here is don't just think about someone else's form and have that be your ideal and think that you're just going to achieve that, okay? Especially, I mentioned his name earlier in the video, but especially if it's Elliot Kipchoge because that guy has insane running form, but this is a guy who's literally been running at a professional level probably since he was about like 14, 15 years old. He's probably been, uh, had, had a different life experience than you. He has obviously very different genetics than you different genetics than all of us because he can run under two hours in the marathon. But that's just the thing. You can't just look at someone else's form and say, I'm going to be like that. You need to do what's best for you. And that's what this is all going to help you do. So as I said, we're going to start with talking about thinking about your form consciously. Okay. And let's start with an obvious one. Let's start with posture. Okay. You want to have a tall, upright posture. Okay. But at the same time, you also want to have a good forward lean. Later in the video, we're going to show you a drill that will help to kind of reinforce that forward lean, help you to kind of figure that out because most people are actually really upright, almost like leaned back looking, and you don't wanna be like that. You wanna have a good forward lean. So upright, forward lean, shoulders back and down and relaxed, okay? Back, down, and relaxed. You don't want your shoulders to be like most people's are, which is upright, kind of forward, and really tense, okay? So that's what you don't want. You definitely want it to be back, down, relaxed. So upright, Shoulders back down, relaxed, good forward lean. Second thing to talk about is gonna be foot strike. So I'm gonna set you down for a second. Now, I think we all know roughly where you wanna strike at your foot. It's right about that midfoot, right? Not way up on the toes, not back on the heel. If you, if you wanna do a little simple drill to kinda of reinforce this before a run, just do a march, just march in place, okay? Just march in place. What you'll notice is that when you do that, you're actually landing right about at that midfoot, okay? You're not landing way up on your toes, not landing back on the heel. The reason we don't want to be back on the heel or up on the toes, okay? Back on the heel, when we run, we want all of our momentum, all of our energy going forward, okay? When you strike at the heel, there's a little bit of energy push back this way, which is just inhibiting your forward motion, which is obviously going to slow you down. The reason you don't want to be way up on your toes is that it, because it's a huge stress on your like Achilles, your calf. Uh, that's why people who, who are like kind of toe strike, me included, 
tend to get more like Achilles problems, calf issues, things like that. People that heel strike tend to have shin splints and other issues like that, okay? But here's the thing, you actually don't want to work on your foot strike consciously. You don't wanna just think, okay, if I'm heel striking right now, you don't just wanna say, okay, I'm gonna start uh, going up on my midfoot. The reason being is you're gonna overcorrect. Almost certainly you're gonna overcorrect, okay? So instead what you wanna do is you wanna work on your cadence. So cadence is the number of footsteps per minute that you're, that you're actually taking while you're running, okay? So you think about what the ideal is. Typically it's known as like 180 steps a minute, okay? Just real quick to note, that's just an average of like what a bunch of really fast runners do. Somebody just like looked at video of a bunch of fast runners and decided they're all doing about 180 steps a minute and that's now the ideal. In my opinion, if you're within like plus or minus five steps a minute of that, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. It's once you're outside that range, that's when you need to take a look at it. So what I recommend doing is when you're out on an easy run or even maybe like a light tempo run, time a minute of your run and count your steps I trying to be as natural as possible. I know that's really difficult when you're actually thinking about it, but try to, to run as naturally as possible and just time your steps. Time on one foot is what I recommend doing anyway. That way it's just easier to keep track. Uh, and then you wanna see what number you get, okay? So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so I got 85 that time, okay? So with the ideal being 180, that would be 90 steps on one foot, okay? What I want you to do after that is think about what you need to do in order to get that closer to 90. So I'm at 85, that means I was over striding a little bit, right? So I'm taking slightly too long of steps. Now I'm six feet tall, I'm a taller guy. So that usually means that you're gonna have like a bit of a longer stride, which is okay. At the same time, go ahead and try, get a little bit closer to 90. You're probably not gonna have to correct that much because it's not really that, that many steps, you know, from 85 to 90, but I'm gonna go ahead and try that right now. All right, so that time I got 88, which for me is pretty much ideal. I'm usually between like 86 and 88. I'm, I've almost never hit 90 unless I like really try to make my stride pretty choppy, which we definitely don't want to do. So that for me is okay. So that's a nice little drill that you can try, you know, when you're out on an easy run or like I said, like a lighter tempo run, something like that. Don't really want to do it on anything too hard just because you don't really want to worry about focusing on that. But anything lighter, you can try time in that minute and then like 10 minutes later on your easy run, time another minute and see if you can get a little bit closer to 90. Hey guys, popping in here real quick. So this video ended up getting super long uh, in, the, in the next part where we talk about like the strength exercises, I went pretty in depth and really wanted to show you exactly how to do that stuff. So it ended up getting super long. So I'm actually making this a two part video. So this one that you just watched is part one. We talk about like the, the mental aspect, kind of thinking about your form. In part two, the next video, you're gonna see like the actual strength exercises, things that I recommend in order to uh, improve your form. I go really in depth, but I just didn't wanna make this like a 20 minute video for you. So uh, check out part two, enjoy it, and let me know what you think.